Give the gift of life and be an organ and tissue donor. More than 100,000 people need an organ transplant right now. And more than a million more will need a, tr a tissue transplant this year alone. Did you know that you can save the lives of up to nine people with your gift of organ donation and vastly improve the quality of life of 50 others with your gift of tissue? Yes, and our guest, Santa Fe native Mark Rodriguez, is alive today because someone took a few seconds to sign up to be an organ donor. Hi, Mark. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, we're so excited to talk about your inspirational story. Let me just tell viewers first that you are actually only 43 years old and nine months ago this man had a bilateral lung transplant and ironically it happened in Aurora, Colorado where we've been talking about of course what happened in the movie theater. Now let me ask you when did you become ill and how soon after were you told that you needed a lung transplant? Well I first became ill uh, in October of 2010. Mm -hmm. um, I started coughing a bit in, in September and then it got worse towards the end of September and uh, one evening at my home uh, I started coughing having a coughing spell mm -hmm. and I got up to get some water and I passed out so it's just a cough when I aspirated when I passed out I aspirated and it gave me pneumonia and then from mm -hmm. there it went pretty quick and may I mention that you were also in very good shape when this all began you were working out regularly correct I I was uh, working as a stonemason and mm -hmm. that's pretty much like being in a gym all day yeah so um i was i was in good shape yeah. uh, i started dropping weight um that summer into the fall and didn't really think anything about it uh but you know uh, when i finally went to go get checked they ended up keeping me in the hospital for a week and then that's is that when they told you that you needed the transplant yeah well they they knew I had a lung disease mm -hmm. and then they wanted to do a uh, surgical biopsy right and they did that in November of 2010 and wow. um, that's when I was told that my only option for survival was a double lung transplant wow, scary mark how long were you on the list and how did you cope with the waiting game of that process mm -hmm. well I didn't I didn't get listed until August of two 2011. Wow. So for this all happened, this was in November that you were told that this was going to be something you would need and you didn't even get on the list until six months later? Yeah, I went for my medical evaluation at the University of Colorado Okay. Um, in May of 2011, mm -hmm. but I wasn't listed because they had some uh, reservations because they thought I had lymphoma. Wow. And so I, that whole summer, I went through a series of tests, scans, biopsies, mm -hmm. and pretty much put me through the ringer. And then they determined that, that I didn't have cancer. And I was called on August 8th of 2011 to tell me that I was put on the list. Wow. And then they called me two days after that on August 10th to tell me I was first on the list. Oh, wow. And yeah. that was because of your physical condition? Well, it, I was working out at that time. Mm -hmm. Um, just trying to strengthen myself as much as I could. Gosh, good for you. For the surgery, uh, but you know, there was two things working in my favor. One was good and one was bad. Sure. Um, the good part was that I was in a pulmonary rehab program and I was working out. Also that I was young enough and didn't have any underlying uh, medical conditions besides my lung disease. Mm -hmm. Um, the bad part was is that it was progressing so fast that I just didn't have time. But then you were number one on the list and then you were very fortunate to have a wonderful donor be able to save your life, literally. And so then you went through the surgery and what was that process like? Well, I was actually working out when I got my call mm -hmm. um, at the cardiopulmonary rehab clinic at uh, Krista St. Vincent Hospital in Santa Fe mm -hmm. and I had just finished a, a set <clears throat> and my phone rang mm -hmm. of course I had to keep my phone with me at all times and when the transplant center would call it would always come up unknown so I looked at my phone and it said unknown and so I, I knew it was a transplant center and so I answered the phone and usually the transplant coordinator would you know Asked me, how you doing? Small talk, how are wow. things going? Stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, not this time. She was like, uh, hi, Mark, where are you? 
And I said, well, I'm, I'm working out. And she said, uh, well, you need to stop. And I said, why, what's wrong? She says, you need to go home, and get your bag. I have a perfect set of lungs for you. And I, <laughs> I froze. And, and I everything totally froze. changed from that moment on. And she said, did you hear what I said? And I said, yeah, I heard what you said, but I can't talk. <laughs> she said, well, good, then just listen. You know, and she was like, drive safely, put your seatbelt on, don't run, and don't take any yellow lights, don't speed. And, you know, you see it on TV where it's like rush, rush. Right, and, right, right. And... And the rest is history, literally. It's not really like that. <laughs> it's not really, I mean, no. for me it wasn't. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to go to the Santa Fe airport and they medevaced me to Colorado. And I sat around for quite some time waiting right. for the lungs to arrive at the hospital. And, and, and of course, I, mean, I want to be able to post the whole story because the whole story is so interesting. But I want to show the fact that <laughs> now, nine months later, you kind of are kicking the face of Fox's <laughs> boot on uh, television right well, now. Well, I will say this. Mark did receive a double lung transplant, but nobody told his jump shot. Because <laughs> <laughs> some things never change. But um, it is great to see you back in action. And yeah, literally back in the game. I mean, <laughs> yeah. by the way, you are the only guy who's going to be competing out of over 1,200 transplant athletes coming up in a very special event coming up. Tell us really quickly about that. Uh, the United States Transplant Games is an Olympic-style competition for mm -hmm. transplant recipients. It's taking place in Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, starting July 28th through the 31st. And I'll be the only uh, a male transplant athlete from New Mexico. Oh, good for There's you. There's two other females that are, that are attending and competing. Um, unfortunately, New Mexico did not take a team this year, mm -hmm. so but hopefully you're, you're representing. Time. Mark, I know you'll represent New Mexico well. Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much, and we just wish you continued health and continue to inspire everybody. And, of course, we got the word out that how important organ donation really is. It Thank is. you so much. And Thank coming up next on New Mexico Style, New Mexico 101, we'll tell you where you can learn all about the land of enchantments.